Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Lexi Lideline, joined by Logan Barandas and Chris Lemo. Today we will be taking a deeper look at each of the MLB Championship Series. The Tampa Bay Rays are facing the Houston Astros and the ALCS, while the Los Angeles Dodgers are taking on the Atlanta Braves. So Logan, let's start off with you. What did you take away from Game 1 of the ALCS and how will the rest of the series play out? Well, to start off, Kevin Cash, to put it simply, is a genius. The, what, what he's done with this bullpen so far in the playoffs, it's been astronomical. What they did against the Toronto Blue Jays, they gave up two runs in that series. They outdueled Garrett Cole in Game 5 in the ALDS against the New York Yankees to get them where they are now. This is the farthest they've gotten with Kevin Cash, and it's been mostly on their pitching. Their bullpen got them to the number one seed in the AL this year, and it's kept them going throughout the playoffs, and it's kept this red-hot Astros team, which has been really hot going into the playoffs. You got George Springer going 286, Altuve 304, Correa hitting 500, Alex Bregman hitting 318. That Astros team that's been so hot so far to start out these playoffs, they've been held silent right now by the, the, the pitching of the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, and I think looking at the Astros pitching, their problem is they don't have that same depth because they lost a guy like Verlander. I mean, don't get me wrong, Zach Greinke is a great pitcher, but his postseason numbers have not been there over his career, especially since he came over from L.A. to Arizona and then eventually to Houston. Um, they, they got a couple guys. I know Framber Valdez has been pretty good, but they, they don't have the same depth that Tampa has. Tampa is also, and I think this is the key, Tampa has their bullpen to rely on a little bit more so than Houston. And in a series where I think it's really going to test their bullpen, I mean, they're going seven days in a row all out. There's no break, you know, two games here, then a day off. That's really going to test the team's depth of their bullpen and starting. The Rays can throw a lot of different guys at you, at you to start. They can also use an opener. Houston doesn't have that. You know, they, they have a couple guys, again, that can start at the top of the rotation, but they really only have two or three starters. They have Lance McCullers is probably their best starter right now, and he lost tonight. So I, I just don't see them being able to win this series without that much depth. With the Rays that don't their pitching, excuse me, it's like Moneyball on steroids. They have, they have a bunch of key guys who've been contributors for them throughout the regular season. They don't have any big names on the offensive side, but they're just so well coached. They're so well managed. Kevin Cash has done a great job using that bullpen. And they have so many guys they can rely on to, if they want to do an opener like they did in games four and five in the ALDS, they can do that. And if they want to close out games in very close games, they can do that as well. So all the options are there for this race team. And as you said, it's kind of like Moneyball. I mean, they got a guy in Joey Wendell who was DFA'd by the Oakland Athletics back in, I believe it was 2017. They traded for him, and all of a sudden in 2018 in his first season, he comes in fourth in Rookie of the Year voting. I mean, this guy is outstanding. I mean, he was actually picked up the same day that Giancarlo Stanton was with the Yankees. Look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you he's made a bigger impact with the Rays than Stanton has made with the Yankees. But Stanton is not in this series, and Joey Wendell's team did advance further. So, but I mean, really, the Rays just, they get value at the margins, and they are just experts at that. All right, let's transition to the NLCS between the Dodgers and the Braves. Chris, let me ask you, how do you see this matchup playing out, and which team do you think advanced to the World Series? Well, I got the Dodgers in this one, and really it's because of their starting depth. As I said, this is going to be one of those series that really you have to have starting depth. I mean, if you are running out there seven nights in a row and one night your pitcher only goes two innings and you have to bullpen it, your bullpen is shot for the next day. And the Dodgers have like three guys in uh, Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, Julio Urias, that are any team's number three starter, and they haven't even really started them this postseason. They've been using those guys mostly out of the bullpen. The Dodgers just have an insane amount of depth. Atlanta can match their lineup, don't get me wrong. And I mean, their lineup has put up great numbers, even with Freddie Freeman and Ozzie Albies kind of not having the best couple games so far to start their postseason. But besides Max Fried and Ian Anderson, they don't have the starting depth. They have a good bullpen but I'm not really sure who they can rely on to start games three and four. I mean, maybe Bryce Wilson and Kyle Wright, but they don't have experience. 
Ian Anderson has been lights out, and that's great, but they're gonna have to win at least one of those games started by Anderson and Freed to have a shot in the series. Yeah, I look at the Braves in a potential upset here. You mentioned the lineup side by side. Of, of course, for the Dodgers, Bellinger and uh, Mookie Betts have both come out huge for, for them in this um, playoff run against the Padres in, in specific. They've really recaptured their form, but the Braves have two MVP candidates on that team. Freddie Freeman carried them throughout the, throughout the uh, regular season. Same with Marcelo Zuna. And throughout these playoffs, Travis Darno has been an actual hero for them. He was kind of forgotten about on the Mets when he kind of fell off that little path. Then he went to the Dodgers for a couple games, got cut. And then the Rays kind of fixed his career, and now he's back with the Atlanta Braves, and he carried them against the uh, Miami Marlins in the NLDS. He had 600 in that series, 6 for 10, and he overall he's hitting 421 in these playoffs with two home runs mixed in. So look for him to potentially break out. And I didn't even mention Ronald, Ronald Acuna. He's been by far the best player that the Braves had. Probably with uh, Freddie Freeman, they've been neck and neck, but he's also there as well. But you mentioned the pitching against the Cincinnati Reds. They gave up no runs in the first round in those two games. Max Freed pitched really well, and then Ian Anderson did the same, and the bullpen survived bases loaded opportunities left and right in game one. They worked around a lot of a lot of damage to win that series. Then they did the same thing against Miami. Ian Anderson had a great performance as well, but that pitching overall for the Braves has been much hotter. And don't get me wrong, Clayton Kershaw, Walker Buehler, they've been really great in the past. I'm not sure how much I can trust them right now. The Brewers probably have the worst lineup right now in the in the playoffs, and they showed it in in the uh, two games that they made in the playoffs. And then Walker Bueller, he, he's he's been great as well. But this is the first true test that they have to face these playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I will say though, I think the LA lineup is definitely a little bit better than Miami and Cincinnati. Um, I mean, Atlanta's pitching has outperformed my expectations. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know if they'll be able to carry it over into this series. But one area to watch for will be the L.A. bullpen. The back end of the bullpen, Kenley Jansen, I don't really trust right now. He's had a tough playoff so far. He's very streaky, and right now he's cold. The Braves bullpen, um, I think, will be the key for them to lock down a series. But I got the Dodgers in six. The 2020 MLB season had a record high 16 teams in the playoff picture. Gentlemen, with an expanded field, I want to know which players or teams surprised you the most during the 2020 postseason. Yeah, Lexi, you mentioned, you mentioned that 16 teams make this year's playoffs. Seven of those teams came from the AL and NL Central divisions. None of those teams made it out of the first round. And in, in, out of those seven teams that played, there were only two playoff games won, which means five of those series ended in sweeps, and they didn't even look close at all. The only two series that um, went to the, the game three, which was the max you can go to, was the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago White Sox. And they both won game one and they choked in games two and three. But you have the NL Central who had four teams in this year's playoffs and they just didn't look good at all. I mean, you had the Chicago Cubs in particular who played the Miami Marlins, who no one expected the Marlins to make it as far as they did. And then they absolutely dominated the Cubs. And you could say the same thing with the three other three seed, the Minnesota Twins, probably a World Series favorite for some people as they have a really great offense, really great pitching as well. And then the Astros just destroy them. This, this was a complete embarrassment from the central teams. And the only, the, the only first round matchup that didn't end with a central team losing was the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays. But of course, those, are, those teams are both in the AL East. Yeah, and I actually want to talk about Tampa because Again, they've, I, I know it's shocking because they were one of the best teams in the regular season, but for me, they, they lacked that star power, and I really thought, you know, come October, that would hurt them. They, they wouldn't get the clutch hits. Boy, I couldn't be more wrong. I mean, Randy Arozarena all of a sudden is Mr. October. I mean, the guy has four home runs in eight games, or three home runs in eight games, batting over 400 right now. He came over in the Jose Martinez trade for Matthew Liberatore, one of their top prospects this past winter, and I thought, okay, the headliner here is Jose Martinez. Well, no, he got shipped out to Chicago and they're gone. And he didn't even really have that big of an impact on Tampa. And meanwhile, Randy Arozarena, a guy that wasn't even a top 100 prospect on most boards coming into the season, looks like the MVP for this Rays team. I mean, if they win the World Series this, team, this year, he may honestly be MVP. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time a guy was a rookie and MVP in the World Series in the same year. Thank you, gentlemen. 
Well, that'll wrap it up here on Penn State Sports Night. For Logan Barandez and Chris Lemo, I'm Lexi Lydline. Thank you for tuning in and have a great night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.